Welcome to the Shiny Radio Network, New York City, always talking about everything. And we are here today on the Michael Muse Show. We are excited because when it comes to business, it's, people are looking for the success team. People are looking for that person to be the dynamic duel. And I am blessed to have a, the power couple who are making things happen. And they haven't just started making it happen. They've been making it happen for a long time. Each of them are experienced and totally established in everything they're doing, and they're going to share some deep nuggets that's going to help a person who is either married with their business or they're looking to get married in their business to make that thing work right. So, ladies and gentlemen, no further ado, let me introduce you to Mark and Pam Perry. Hello, hey. Mike. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Please. Absolutely. I am honored to have you um, good people on because we are living in a society now where being in business and working from home and being married, they're almost interchangeable. And it's to a point where a lot of people are getting a disconnect when they try to gel it all together to make that power happen. And so my first question is, how long have you guys been married? Oh, 20 years. It'll be 21 next year. No, it'll be 21 this March. Well, yeah, well, we just started in January, so. <laughs> oh, good question. <laughs> wow, 21 years. And for the background for both of you, were you both in business before you got married, or did you transition out of corporate America? How did that process work out? It was, well, when I, we actually met. Um, Mark was working for a very large ad agency, and I was looking for a job, so to speak. I was looking to transition from what I was doing into something different. And so he actually um, gave me some mentoring type of advice at the very beginning when we met. I um, met him in the lobby of uh, Barton Cable Vision. And, okay. um <laughs> And I was there for interview, and I saw this guy and I was like what do you do and he's like oh I work for this company so I actually was like well hey we need to have lunch I'm looking to get into advertising as well on the agency side and really I was just like just trying to figure out what I really wanted to do and um, we met so he was actually working for the agency I eventually started working in advertising sales and then really at that point um, rolled into some other things, but really uh, advertising sales was what my background was while he was at the agency. Um, and then, Mark, at that transition, what happened? You left the agency. I well, left there, yeah, start up a, uh, a sales organization to feed a printing company. It actually was a printing company that actually morphed into a marketing company. And okay. uh, through that period of time, uh, once the marketing company got started, it was when we got married, and mm-hmm. uh, I kind of cut through a whole lot of stuff. But then Pam joined the company uh, after uh, she had our child. Okay. And uh, led 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 our built a uh, our PR what we were doing at that time a PR department, and uh, she was practically the department herself. I mean, she was a one man mm-hmm. work machine. Um, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that, that's really was the the point that we really started working together, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he ran that company, Perry Marketing Group, for about 10 years, and he did all the automotive. He had Chrysler Ford and GM as clients and all the automotive suppliers, the National Association of Black Automotive Suppliers. They're nonprofit. He set up. He, he was a trailblazer. I mean, at, during that point, he worked with clients that took them really from uh, something that they had a vision for, and he actually brought it to life. So he gave them all their creative solutions in terms of what they needed. He had a staff of five and paid full benefits, had an office, worked actually um, in a very nice office in Southfield. We had a receptionist, and, I mean, just the full real deal, right? Yes. And um, 
during that time, I also was working there and I had their daughter and stuff. So I really like working from home. That was like my <laughs> dream. <laughs> I was like, you know, all this with the receptiveness and the, you know, I mean, it was cool. I didn't mind like socializing with folks, but it was just like, really? And, you know, so with, with the daughter, with our daughter, I really wanted to be, you know, available for her. So eventually that business uh, closed. It morphed at about 2000, I guess you would say. And at that point, I think I picked up the uh, the other entrepreneurial book from Mark. And um, I tried a couple of other things, too. Remember, Mark, while I was searching before we got married, what, what it is right. that I wanted to do. I did a special events and meeting planning company and I was working as a freelance with other ad agencies and just really trying to figure out what I wanted to do until I really start working with um, Mark's company and and really just really finding my niche. And what I found was that PR was really my niche and I really enjoyed and my passion was working with nonprofits, particularly churches, particularly black churches, particularly um, working with Christian authors speakers, anyone who motivates other people, I felt yes. that I was called to really help really expand their voice, expand their dream, expand them in the marketplace. And I had the yes. skills to do it from advertising PR. So eventually Perry Marketing Group closed. Um, Mark went and got, uh, uh, quote, unquote, a, a another large, working with another <laughs> large agency. Um, and then I started Ministry Marketing Solutions, but I worked from home. We didn't have an office. We didn't have a staff of five. We didn't have all of that. Um, and Mark helped me. He always did. I mean, he, like I said, when we first met, he was like my mentor. So he was a person that um, I always looked to for advice and counsel, especially in terms of of business and and administrative and and leadership. So when I was doing ministry marketing and I did the podcast, Chocolate Pages, I remember, remember, Mark, we did that, um, the thing at the uh, Heart Plaza with the Chocolate Pages on tour and it was Deborah Smith Pollard. She was doing the Praise Fest down at Heart Plaza and we took all of the Christian authors that we knew. They had a table out there. They were, uh, you know, they had an audience of like, what, 10,000 people were going through there. But Mark helped organize that and saw the vision for that of really just putting um, the authors really on showcase, you know, during the Praise Fest that really draws thousands of people from all over the city. And um, we had a podcast and we did newspaper, collage, uh, I guess you would say every month. And, I mean, just really helping me shape the vision as we go about ministry marketing and, and where it is now and um, kind of pre-internet time, too. Remember, this is 2000. A lot of people were, you know, cell phones were like, you know, who has that? And the things that, that people can do with their mobile devices is so different when it started in 2000. So it, it, it definitely made a change during during that time. But working together, um, even though he worked the full time with the ad agency, he would still always offer advice and, and um and really just helped me uh, in terms of really the uh, infrastructure of really how to scale the business and how to grow the business and, and give me ideas and suggestions of what I needed to do and what were my blind spots, so to speak. And then eventually this year, Mark, tell them what's going on now. Yeah, so uh, I ended up uh, leaving the company. I decided to, you know what, it's time for me to get back out there uh, and chase that bug again some more. And, yeah. uh, and really looking at the, the business model a lot different than before, as you was talking about before, of having a staff and so forth. You can just do so much more from networking and uh, virtual uh, uh, assistance and for, for people around the country and networking with other entrepreneurs that uh, it's uh, really exciting. I'm involved in some some projects that are from the West Coast to, to England. So, uh it, uh, it's and it's just now starting, so I, it's I'm just nothing but to go up. So I'm really anxious to uh, to see where it's going to take us as we progress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My question for you is this: um, she, your wife, said something that hit, kind of caught my attention real quick when she mentioned that you mentored her, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so kind of take me back there. At one point in time during the mentoring, did you say, "Hey, you know what"? This might be the one. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can pinpoint an exact moment, but uh, certainly, if yeah. Damon it, Davis, it, it if Damon from... Davis was alive, I think he would. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it went from mentorship to uh, you know to courtship, you know. Um, but, we were um, hanging out. We were working out. Yeah. We were working out together at the yeah. and, and you know, you know, going like, to bar you know, games. Start, yeah, you get to know somebody, and you know, you start taking notes. Well, you know what? This this looks pretty interesting here. This could be something else than you know just uh, talking about business. So um, mm-hmm. you know, it was a gradual thing. I don't think it was like a slap upside the head, and you know, but. Uh, you know, and I think that it's really the foundation of of when you when you think about our relationship is that the fact that we were really friends first, uh, right. and then had, and then had grown from there. So, uh, and so you got to really like somebody, particularly if you're going to work with your spouse. And, you know, you tend obviously you're going to see a lot of each other because uh, when you work for another job, seventy percent of your waking time you're someplace else. I was seeing people at work more than I was seeing my family. So, so now, you know, we're around each other a lot more. And, uh, again, it's the friendship. I mean, you know, it's certainly a lot more laughs during the day than I had when I was at work, um, mm-hmm. so to speak. And uh, so we, we enjoy each other's company. Not to say that, you know, there's times that, you know, we have some, hey, you know, of, of really coming to matters and, and looking at things differently, but I think that's where the strength comes. I mean, it's not a personal thing. It's, you know, we're really looking for the best solutions in some of these uh, challenges that we are trying to answer problems for. And I like what you said there, Mark, that, number one, you you let the mentorship take its course, and you made sure you, made sure you had activities and the events and things that were taking place within the workplace and the social events, you just took notes. And I like that because I think that's something a lot of people realize because we've seen so many people in the quote-unquote workplace had these romances that just blow all up all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I like what you say, you know, you became friends first, and Mm -hmm. you kind of sat back and just examined and, and kind of, watch the situation play out to really see Pam's character. And I think that's one thing that's missing so much in relationships today is that people don't take the time to really see a person's character. People are mm-hmm. so quick so quick to jump on the lust train, as I call it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they get on that lust train and end up getting burnt. Because right. they found out that the person who they thought they were going to build something with had never had intentions on building anything. And mm-hmm. so I love the fact that you said that. So in in doing that, you got a chance to see her without mm-hmm. any emotions and without any, uh, without any lightning and dating, but she was able to just watch and observe how she interacts with other people and how she sure. carries herself as a woman. And who gave you? Who taught you how to do that? Because a lot of men, when they are in a work environment, if they see a woman mm-hmm. and she's an attractive woman, they're going to talk to her, and then mm-hmm. they're not going to take that time. So, how did you get that patience to do that? No, no, I think I just got to a point of being just a little bit more cautious and a lot more um, pensive and thinking about, you know relationships and from that sort. Um, I, um, I can't tell you that I read it in a book. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, there's, there's guys that you talk to. There was a, a, a mentor that, that I had along that time that has become a pastor now. And, uh, he was, uh, he was very instrumental in terms of having some influence in that, in our relationship. And I so and actually it was interesting because he was really, he was friends with both of us, and so I think mm-hmm. uh, he gave her some mentoring as well. Um, yep. <laughs> so you know that was that was really really kind of unique. I don't know if folks have people like that in their lives a lot. Uh, we were really blessed to have him at that time. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, mm-hmm. you hit on something real important there. You, you you made it so important that you both had someone who mutually knew both of you, and they were able to give you constructive 
uh, advice. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of conversations. A lot of conversations. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And he was he was actually a very strong um uh protege of my pastor. So that helped as well. My pastor which is Reverend Joseph Jordan, um, who I just consider the reason why I'm really doing ministry marketing because he says one day you're gonna do PR for Jesus, you know. And so <laughs> but I didn't even know what that meant at that time, but you know, he right. was the one that really, like, influenced me the most, and he influenced a lot of people. He's, he's gone on with the uh-huh. Lord, but, but he was the one that um, mentored um, this other pastor who actually became the, the the mentor to both of us, you know, in terms of business and in terms of before we were married, kind of like premarital counseling, but all over really, like, from a friendship type of, type of thing. So that he was really strong in that, and he was... One of the first very successful in business as well as being a, a, a strong spiritual leader as well. And so if you, Pam, during this time of mentorship, at what point in time did you look at Mark and say, you know what, this guy right here, you know, I, 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 I feel I, I can see a future with him. Mm-hmm. Well, we together, um, we started an organ organization together. Um, it was Blacks in Advertising Radio and Television, and we ran that for, during the, you know, I was president, uh, started it, and then we had a couple other presidents, but during that time, he was running this company, and I was running the organization, and I could really just see us just really working together. I mean, it just was so natural. It just felt like breathing. I mean, it was just very fluid and and um not that we didn't have arguments or anything but we worked together we were actually uh trying to do good in the community together we were going to church together and i love 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 his family oh my goodness i just love his mom and dad to this day they're like my parents um yeah his sister his brother i mean just you know just really a meld of every area of our lives you know from spiritual emotionally family um you know, just just how we feel about family. Um, so it's just, you know, just really, you know, from all the other quote-unquote guys that I ever dated, I mean, it was like no comparison. It was just like, you know, guys that dated before, I don't even remember what that was all about. I mean, they were just, what I call them, just training wheels. I don't know. I mean, you know, they didn't have all the other elements that you would want for, what we see in our parents, Mark's parents have been married, what, 64 years? 60, 60, 64 65. years. And then my, 65, and my parents over 50 years. So it's like, well, what kind of glue does does that relationship take? And um, I saw that, that that's what me and Mark probably, you know, have that glue, you know, that same type of character by looking at the role models of each of our parents. Exactly. And mm-hmm. it, so it looks like, one thing you two two have done, kind of looked at the background very closely. Oh yeah. And and, the, and the, just the simple fact that both of you came from loving two parent homes with a solid foundation marriage, it just it, it, it helps bring everything together. And so, mm-hmm. so when it comes to at the point in time. You you came together and you got married. How did the conversation go when it came time to talk about your dreams and goals and business? Because so many times couples come together, they can get along, but when it comes to business, they don't get along. And in fact, they don't get along yeah. because they don't see they don't see eye to eye on each other's vision or their perception or what they see they spouse or significant other is definitely not the way they want to see it. And so how did you how did you two work that out? So I, I've got to give a lot of credit to, to Pam in this part because Pam has always been somebody that uh has taken her her goals very seriously. And uh as you you know, you sit down in the beginning of the year, the close of one year, she was one of these people that was really always looking to envisioning what her life would be like, not only during the current year, five years out, 10 years out, where she wanted to be, what she wanted to do, you know, um, 
Uh, she's the one that brought vision boards in our lives, you know, at, at a, before it became really popular, that she was doing these types of things. And, um, and that really kind of taught me. I mean, because I, I would, you know, write down a couple of things I'd want to do during the year or something like that. But she just took it to a whole different level and uh, made it much more serious. And then we've taught that to our daughter since then as well of, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. of planning planning your life. So. Mhm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's an advertiser. And she's an and she's an advertising major at Michigan State as well. You know, so she actually decided, well, I'm going to major in advertising and marketing. Yeah. That that's that is powerful right there. And ladies and gentlemen, we are on the Bashani Radio Network, New York City, always talking about everything on the Michael Muse Show. And we are here with a powerful couple, Mark and Pam Perry, and we are discussing how to succeed in your marriage and business at the same time. I, it is, you, you guys are truly sharing some powerful nuggets and just basic things people need to do in order to go from the courtship into marriage and to be in the business and bring that together. Now, my question for you, Pam, is this. Mm-hmm. I know you uh, You had your, how long have you been married when you had your first daughter? A year. Less than, what? <laughs> we went on our first, uh, what do they call it, our second honeymoon and came back and we, we were pregnant <laughs> in Jamaica. You want to tell that, the, the, the two little uh, tidbits of our, our uh, so that's the um, other thing um, about being married to Pam. Pam, mm-hmm. she's brought a lot of blessings in our in our relationship. We, uh, when I asked her to marry me, we were planning out the wedding, and um, just as we're making the plan, she finds out at the time she was working for the Salvation Army, and uh, she was led through uh, her uh, administrative assistant to uh, make a call to the people that held the. Uh, was it the home show that was at Cobo mm-hmm. Hall? Home and, Builders uh, and Flower we, Show. Home Home mm-hmm. Builders and Flower Show. And we were the couple that they gave away a wedding package to, meaning that <laughs> they paid for our entire wedding. I mean, oh, uh, everything except the flower. for dress. You yep. have the flowers, the, the, the cake, flowers. the green, the limousine. And that's not all. Pam goes to a, a, uh, a bridal shop on, on the Super Bowl Sunday. And wins a package where all of the men get their uh, <laughs> um, their, their, their suits for, and their tuxes for free. I mean, so I knew I had the right one. And we got and we got the night at the Anthenium. <laughs> That's right, oh, we had a night at the Anthenium too, as well. <laughs> and so so Mark, uh, you, a year later, what's that? What's that? So Mark, you truly you truly found um, uh, you tr- truly found your princess. Right. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, she's a, she was designed for me. I mean, it was, she's mm-hmm. a gift from above, uh, no Not doubt. Like, the, like, so, a, like a lottery lottery win. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to say. I was married to, like, I hit the lottery, you know. She's like yes. a, a stack of lottery tickets. Um, <laughs> the, the next year, uh, she, she talks me in, she, she coerces me <laughs> to go to a meeting for this luncheon. And uh, we go to lunch, and reluctantly we get there late because I'm, I'm really taking my time. They kind of, you know, force us to take these tickets. I didn't really want them, <laughs> and she wants to stay at the end to see who who won the 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 <laughs> prize, the gift, the door prize. And mm-hmm. we were the door prize winners of a five day, four night, all expense paid to Jamaica. Oh <laughs> man! <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's what she's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's like rewarding the late yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we need to go to this meeting. We need to stay. So now, Michael, so you know, whenever I make a suggestion, like we need to go to such and such, oh, I'm pretty much know that I don't get any argument now because it's like, mm-hmm. okay, okay. Marcus, yeah, so we got Marcus on board. He is ready. He has hey, his mouth is closed. He's ready right. to make it happen. <laughs> I, I've seen it happen too many times. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so those are those are just some of the blessings. I mean, we dated for a long time. We were friends for a long time in business, running organizations together. Mark was on the uh, he was on one of the things for the MLK luncheon dinner with the SELC. I saw him work through 
you know, working with uh, uh, not Coleman Young, but Coleman Young's um, brother, brother uh, Claude Young, and you know, just we just have a lot of fun together when, when we even work on different projects and things like that. So, you know, pretty much I, you know, you kind of know that he's the one. But when we work together now, which is a different space, working from home, I had a home office. I have a home office. I mean, it's pink, it's bright, it's it's just my office, right? So he's got to find his space. I mean, I've got my space. So obviously he's not going to be in the pink office. So we're, we're figuring right. out. He does voiceover work as well. So okay. we're at this phase now. It's just like, okay, where would the best place to really have his office as well as his voiceover recording studio? So we're probably going to have to redeck out that basement to really be like not just a man cave, but a place where he's going to work and actually do voiceovers and, and that whole gamut. Um, thing. So he'll be up, I mean, he'll be downstairs in his place, and I'll be up in mine in the pink office. So, you know, we're, we're working that part out. But his style is exactly. a lot different from mine. He's more of a morning person. He gets up and going. And I'm more of a, like, you know, after 5 o'clock, it feels like I hit the creative stride and I could be up all night. So mm-hmm. it's, it's sometimes it's a little, little uh, challenging when we have to do things that you know, our our biological clocks are a little bit different, you know, in terms of what when is their best time. Mm-hmm. And so the time you guys first met to the time you got married, how much time was it between you got to know each other? It was five years. Seven years. Was it was it five years or seven years? Oh yeah, I that guess was it was five. five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's and it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I know you mentioned you had your daughter Soon after you um, got married, mm-hmm, you were pregnant mm-hmm. with your first child. And so mm-hmm. how, how was that like with your first child? You, you, you know, you like you said before, you was you was going through what you wanted to do and kind of putting the pieces of puzzle together, things you were doing, and you were still working with Mark. And, and so how was that like taking care of a child and, and still doing what you were doing? It was crazy. I thought I was busy before I had the baby. <laughs> I had no idea how busy it really life could really be when you have a child, right? So, right. so a lot of stuff. I had to, yeah, I, I just really had to make a decision that you can't have everything all at the same time. So, one of the things I really, really enjoyed was really running an organization, which was the BART Blacks in Advertising Radio and Television. We had given away scholarships of thousands of dollars to students. We had career conferences that that had the major players there. We had Keith Clinsdale, George Frazier, Terry Williams, all the people who were industry people. And at one point in time, we had like maybe almost a thousand people at some of these career conferences that were for college kids to learn about marketing, communications, advertising, and PR. I really, really enjoyed the work, and it was really making an impact. People met and networked with each other, and you know, the whole gamut, but I had a baby and I couldn't do it. So the the organization had to disband. Mark was the president at the time. I was, you know, ex officio founder and we just had to let that go. So all the energy obviously had to go elsewhere to, to our daughter. And um, even though it was a, uh, one of those things like, Oh my goodness, it, 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 you know, everything has this, has this own way. I mean, there's other organizations that can pick up where, we left off, and uh, we still had those relationships and things like that. So it, the the part that was the hardest was realizing that I knew in my heart that I really had to make my business really, really work because I wanted to leave a legacy for my daughter and our daughter. And I really, really um, worked really hard. And Mark knows that. He could see the beginning years of Ministry Marketing Solutions, remember that? I just worked like nine around the clock. Um, right. And he was supportive during that time and, you know, is, is you know, but I, I, I worked because I really wanted to, um, one, I felt called to it, but I really wanted to make sure that the company made money and I left a legacy for our daughter. Well, that, that's a beautiful thing right there. And that, that brings me to another question. Once you, like you say, once you had your daughter, did you guys actually sit down and maybe revise your future goals? Because now you do have this child, and like you said, you do want to leave a legacy. So, how did that conversation go, and what did you agree upon? 
Well, you know, well, it's interesting. Um, go ahead, Ben. Yeah, I, you know, I, well, we were married for a year, and then, then Aubrey came. So it wasn't like we were married for five years, and then our daughter came. So we were only married a year, so she was there really much from the beginning. Like I said, before we were married, we thought we were busy. And so after we had got married and got got our daughter, we was like, whoa, some things have got to let go. And so, um, you know, the, the focus was our daughter. I mean, she went to private school. We realized that, you know, she was, um, you know, really, really a uh, smart child, really, you know, smart child. And, and um, you know, just certain things that we know we wanted to make sure that she was exposed to. And, and um, you know, as far as, you know, we had no idea where we were really planting the seeds that she would go into advertising. I mean, I just thought maybe she wouldn't be a lawyer or something like that. But, you know, you know, the proof is, is you know, when you know you do a good job, when your children try to emulate what you do. So that that just surprised me. I never, ever pushed her to say, oh, you know, you should, you know, you should go to law school or you should be this. And, you know, she was like, nope, nope, going into marketing, going into advertising. I was like, okay. She's more like Mark than she actually is me. I, I do have to say that. Well, that's what, that's how children are. Children, um, they watch the good we do. They watch the bad we do. And mm-hmm. and the good thing is, you guys' situation, she saw that as, you know what, if a mommy is great at doing it and she set an example, I want to do the exact same thing. And that's just a testament of uh, what you do in your marriage and what you do for your church and what you do for your community. So I definitely applaud both of you for just that dedication because definitely when you your child comes behind you and want to be like you and your vocation, that is a powerful thing right there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I also took a pause, too, the last two years before she got out of high school. I took a pause, and this, and this is the advantage of really having a um, the world is the internet marketing, right? So I really have a lot of internet marketing uh, skills and savvy and, and social media following, and so I probably got like a hundred a hundred thousand people or so following me, you know, on social media channels and that sort of thing, and and really having an email list. So the last couple of years, I really took a pause from really quote unquote marketing my business so strong. And what I really did was um, stop and just said, okay, a lot of things went automated for the last couple of years. A lot of people don't even know that. But I actually went and um, started looking for scholarships for her. And she won 14 scholarships. By the time she graduated, she'd won 14 scholarships. And obviously, to win 14 scholarships, you have to uh, apply for hundreds of scholarships, right? So we did that, and she won a lot of scholarships. And a lot of scholarships were like $1,000 and that sort of thing. But it was enough to really pay for um, her to uh, do the first two years of college, you know, basically with no um, no money out of our pocket, you know. So so that was really like the main thing that, that I wanted to do. And now she's like in her third year and going into her last year after this. So we're just kind of like, okay, she, she, she's there. She's there, you know. So... Grad school's on her. <laughs> Grad school's on her, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or her, or her corporation, whoever she works for. But she, we're trying to tell her, says, you know, work for one of those corporations that pay for your graduate degree because you're going right. to graduate degrees. We feel right now it's kind of like what a bachelor's degree was for when we went to school. Oh, so it was like really normal to get a at one point normal to get a high school then the bachelor's, but now it's really normal to get that advanced master's degree. So that's what we're kind of looking at telling her that she needs to do. And Mark's dad, Mark's dad actually has a master's degree. So um, we always feel that the generation after you should go further than the generation, you know, further than the generation behind them. So they, they she definitely should go further than we did. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You definitely hit a good point there. And so that, that's definitely a beautiful thing there. So I def, definitely applaud both of you and definitely wish your daughter continued success Definitely behind Thank a powerful you. couple like you two, I'm sure the sky is the limit, and I'm sure all the resources that you two have is at her disposal, and and having great great having great grandparents on both sides. That's that's the winning combination right there. And of course, having God number one, you can't beat that at mm-hmm. all. Right. There. Right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's so the main wanna, thing. Yeah. So I want to hit on the spiritual end now. 
um, when you get when you got married, how did you spiritually? Where were you at? And when you got into the marriage, how did you? What were the things you did? That, what were the things and process you do that that God revealed to you to to do what you're doing now? Um, is it Mark or, or me? Well, for me, it, it's it's different. I mean, we were we were always spiritual together. It's funny that um, we were both at uh, Corinthian, which is like I said, my spiritual um, father that I grew up with. You know grew up in that, it was my quote-unquote church that I grew up in, my home church. But after we had our daughter, because the church was older, we realized that we had to go to a different church because there was no daycare in that church. And it's pretty pretty difficult to sit through a sermon sometimes and the child would be crying and it was like, okay, this is not working. I'm not listening to the sermon because I'm always outside of the service because the daughter is crying. So so anyway, so we kind of made a thing that we really wanted her to grow up in a church that had other young children there as well. And so we ended up going to a, a word church, a word-based church, word of faith. And we really grew there, you know, just learning about the Bible more. And it was really more like a every, like learning, like going to school almost because we had notebooks and we, we took a lot of notes. We just really learned a lot about the word. And then Eventually, I think we were probably seven years there, Mark, you think, and then right. we spent another seven years going to a church up in Lansing, which was very, very fascinating church. It was still a word church, but had a lot of uh, youthful people there, a lot of people who graduated from Michigan State. So we were, quote, unquote, almost like the elders in the church. We were probably in our 40s, and they were probably in their late 20s you know, because a lot of them had stayed up in East Lansing area and, and were still going to church. The pastors were, were even younger than us. So, but it just felt really led to go to that church. We learned a lot about, um, I really felt called to really help that minister who has gone on to done some wonderful things with ministry marketing. Um, you know, I really just helped the church really grow. They're now in Orlando. So then we came back at this point. Okay. My daughter, our daughter is seven. Then she's, uh, you know, one to seven, she's at one church, and then seven to maybe 14, she's at another church. And so now she looks at us, she says, okay, can I pick the next church? So <laughs> we, me and Mark were like, uh, okay, because, you know, you, you think you're teenagers. Like, well, we really want teenagers to be grounded. I mean, because they always say that once a kid is a teenager, they really don't like to go to church. And so we said, you know, what, this is good. Okay, we pick a church. So we picked Brightmore. And I would say it's it's been a good choice for all of us, for Mark, for myself, for Aubrey, and we're really good friends with the pastor. Mark actually was um, the MC at the Martin Luther King program yesterday. Um, 500 people were there at the breakfast. Um, he did an excellent job. Um, he's good friends with the assistant pastor, Pastor Norm. They have conversations and lunches. So, I mean, it's really a good place to really grow. Very multicultural church. I mean, the most multicultural church in the metro Detroit area, if not in the state. I mean, there is no other church that's like that and um, in the area. And so we really, really like that our daughter picked this church. It's a good church home for us. It's not as far as Lansing, so that's also a good thing as well even though it would have been cool for us to go to church in Lansing since she's going to school in Lansing, but uh, it didn't work out like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, good for her, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, so that that actually, you know, spiritually now, I think we're everybody is pretty much on the same page now. You know, we're all, you know, we know that, you know, we got to walk by faith, not by sight. And being in business is definitely that every day. Mm. And, yes, it is. Um, it is a faith walk. you know, I mean, just some days you just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, one week you could have a client that say, you know what, we're not going to really work with you anymore. We're not going to renew our contract. And then the next week we have a new client that says, hey, you know, I really want to work with you. Let's let's and it's double than the client that you lost. I mean, it's very, very much. You just know that you just have to be obedient, just whatever God leads you to do that you just do it. And um Sometimes that when you start to doubt, you just have to go back to the word and just really do the confessions. One of my clients that I had was Dr. Cindy Trim, and I worked with her on a book that became the number one book, uh, Command Your Morning. And that book, I'm telling you, if nothing else, oh, my God, I said, 
that that book is just outstanding. You read those confessions in the morning, and you do you command your morning. I mean, Excellent. that book is powerful. It is powerful. I would I would recommend that book not just because she was my client, but Command Your Morning by Dr. Cindy Trim is powerful. And even working with her, I mean, I know a lot of the clients I work with, I know they're powerful and that sort of thing. But it takes marketing to let the world know just how much that book or that, that particular program that they have will change your lives. And so that's what I really, really enjoy. But spiritually, one of the things that I know that I did was um, actually be a part of a uh, prayer group, um, a Power of the Prayer and Wife uh, prayer group. So that was early in my marriage where um, women, you know, wives would get together and we would pray for our husbands and, and that sort of thing. Um, so that's always real powerful. But women have always had a lot of prayer groups um, so that's one of the things that I do spiritually that, you know, I have friends that are ministers or just friends that are just, you know, longtime Christians that we, we pray together and pray for our husbands. Mm-hmm. And how about you, Mark? Yeah, there's a uh, a men's group that I belong to at Brightmore called the Men of Brightmore. It's, uh, it's a weekly Bible study, but it's, it's the unique part of it is it's beyond the Bible study, which is a really brotherhood and concern and a love for one another that uh, when we get behind the closed doors and, and, and talk about some of the things that we go through, you, you can trust that, you know, you're not going to hear it back in the hallways. And uh, it's, it's, it's unusual that, that men open up like that. And uh, so, you know, it's really the Holy Spirit working on all of us. So, um, and it's been a, a great journey and a great experience, a great learning um, of men of bright more the mob, they call it. So, yeah, it's been really good. Mm-hmm. The mob. Yeah. Yeah, they have the mob, and we got we got the the prayer the the power of the praying wife circle. You know, so they, men always got to have a little macho sound. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's how our men are. That's how our men are. That's how we are, man. We, you know, whatever we're doing, even in this, even in, um in the spiritual realm, we you know we we put our little touch of masculinity on there and power. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. That's it. That's it. And so yeah, that. And this question here, uh, my question here is this one here. When it comes to trials and tribulations, what are some of the things you two have to do to get past tough times when they have occurred? What are some things you have to do to get past those tough times? Well, I think we both know that, that you know, tough times happen, but, you know, it's, it's really the tenaciousness of working through it. It's not the end-all, be-all. You know, this day, this will pass, too. It's understanding that, you know, you got to be patient. It's going to take some hits sometimes. And, uh, you know, from a business standpoint, you just you don't take it personal. Um, and, and keep your eye on the prize. I mean, we – and a lot of the, the strength of this is that what Pam was talking about earlier about uh, walking by faith and not by sight because, you know, and, and just trusting. we got to trust the Lord. And so it's having a, that, a deeper faith. Really, I mean, it may sound kind of trite, but that's that's the real deal. That's the real thing about it. I mean, you just have to believe, and so you mm-hmm. can't let things get you down. And so, I, and so, I think what happens is, is how do you get through that? You know, if it's happened to one of us, the other encourages the other. You know, um, there's been times when uh, I've taken some hard hits, and uh, Pam's been there to uh, lift me back up, help me jump, dust me off, and, and vice versa for her. You know, it's not to leave each other, you know, in a state that uh, is a hopelessness. So mm-hmm. it's uh, being that 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 uh, that supporter for one another. And then yeah. a lot of times too, if we're going through some some hard times or some difficult times, or we're trying to navigate through something that we have no idea what is going on, um, obviously we lean on the Lord first. But we also yeah. have mentors in our lives. We have mentors. That's we right. have coaches. And Mark knows that. You know, in a minute that, you know, I've got some great um, people that I can call on and just God has just really blessed us with, you know, people in our lives that will really speak life into our, to us, you know, the the elders, so to speak, the elders I'm talking about, you know, whether it is um, Mark's dad, he is full of wisdom, Mark's mom is always willing to speak a, 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 a word of love over both of us and just always it boils down to, you know, you really realize what's important, uh, whether I have a mentor who's in business or I can reach out to uh, uh, one of my coaches. I mean, it's just, there's probably 
so many things that we come against on a daily basis that could really crumble the average person, but because we surround ourselves with really, really good people and um, people that have heard Mike, us. You, you got to understand, Mike, mm-hmm. is that married, being married to Pam is like being married to a resource center. I mean, she has connections. She has connections that, I mean, it amazes me all the time. So, you know, you're right. I mean, after we get up, you, you pray and, you know, you have faith. But then the practical side of actually reaching out and asking for help, which, you know, she's not prideful and, you know, and, and clamming up the kind of thing that she's willing to reach out. And she has this ability of meeting people and understanding what it is that they do. And not always connecting people for ourselves, but connecting with others. So that when there is a time to maybe need something from somebody else, they're more than willing to want to help because she has been a blessing to, to them. And uh, so it's sowing and reaping, you know? Uh, mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, Mark, it is. I, so, Mark, let me ask you this thing because I know a lot of men have an issue with this here. When they, when they have a wife or a significant other who does, seek out the extra help and the people mm-hmm. from mentoring. A lot of men get very insecure because mm-hmm. they start to feel like, well, you know what? I'm, I'm not doing good. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, she, she's running right. out of people about me, and, yeah. and, and yeah. I, can't oh, yeah. handle my, I can't handle my household, man, and I don't like mm-hmm. this. It don't feel good. I don't want her talking to Sister yeah. So-and-so or Pastor Deacon, yeah. whatever, you know? Yeah, I had to grow through that. I certainly felt like that initially. Um, but, you know, when when you see that, you know, maybe somebody has been able to share something with you from a different vantage point that, you know, it's a blind spot that you don't see, then you got to acknowledge, hey, this is, you know, this is going to save me in the long run by um, understanding and taking these recommendations that somebody else has, maybe has already gone through uh, that was able to help. So, um, you know, you kind of got to, you know, leave your pride at the door and look at the bigger issue of, you know, what's the resolution here? What's the solution for what we need? And um, mm-hmm. so that's how I, I look at it now. And and just, too, it, he just, it, it didn't happen, Michael. That didn't happen um, initially when we first got married. I mean, I remember when um, we had Perry Mark in the group, and one of the things when I came in to work with the company, I realized that Mark is good in a lot of things, but organizing was not really his strong suit. And not really mine either, but I, I can kind of work with it. But I realized that he needed someone that will handle like the bookkeeping and someone that can organize a lot of things. And so I told him, I said, I, he got a flyer in the mail one day at Perry Marketing Group. I said, we need to call this person. And her name was Carol. And I said, we need to call her and Carolyn. I said, we need to call this person and have her come in. He was like, okay. I said, and just have her straighten up the files. She came in and she whipped those files in the shade. And then she says, is there anything else? And I said, well, can you fix these? Can you do these books? And it was like, okay. She whipped that into shape. And then pretty soon, she became like that really key person that really um, kept Mark um, going in the business so he can actually do what he did best, which was really sales and closed sales and prospect sales. And she did all of the other things. She did the the invoicing, the billing, the, the you know, I mean, just, you know, it was like, wow, this saved like 20 hours a week of what I needed to do. I'm like, yes, because you don't need to be doing that. So a lot, and, and I didn't know this person from Adam, but I just felt sometimes that when God tells me that we just need to talk to this person or we need to do this, it happens. And so I'll say, you know, Mark, you need to call Ed. And then all of a sudden they'll have lunch or breakfast with Ed. And next thing you know, he's got a new, a new position or a new, a, a new contract, you know, so a lot of it has to do with where he initially was like, mm, no. But now it's kind of like, okay, I, I get it. It's like God is speaking to you. Like I said, it, so it didn't I, happen right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't happen right away. But but no. now, it, now it really does. And the same thing, too, with him where he will see blind spots that, that I don't necessarily see. And he'll say, you know what, you really need to – probably asked for more money for this project. And I was like, really? He said, yeah, really. And so I'll go and I'll ask for more money for the project, and I'll actually get it. And it's like, oh, well, you know, it's like, okay, you were right, you are right, you know. So those are the kind of things where the balance comes back. Where it's like yin and yang, you know. You just really, you, you balance each other, and you know where one person, 
we did a, a brainstorm, a whiteboard party a couple of weeks ago. And uh, one of the things that I said that, that the difference, there's a, a specific formula in marketing. It's A-I-D-A, um, attention, mm-hmm. interest, desire, and action. I said, I'm really good at the first two letters was getting attention and getting interest. I said, and you're really good at the, the second two letters, which is really um, creating the desire and getting the sale, creating the action. I said, and so with, between the both of us, our activities are different in terms of really running this business. So if, if I only did attention and interest, I would never get the desire and the action, right, because I'm only good at just really getting people interested, but I can't get them to buy. So he's really good at that point in terms of really putting together the proposal and really closing the sale, which is the area where he's strongest in, and I'm good at the the first part. So we just realized that a couple of weeks ago when we did our whiteboard party and really looking at how we were going to um, map out, you know, our our strategy for this year. That's that's absolutely powerful because you two are truly the power couple. And thank you. Have, yes, yes, thank you. Because when it comes to having an example, we we need examples. And as as mm-hmm. so many failed marriages and they're failed households where the kids are running the muck and mm-hmm. and people in households and and men and women looking just to, they're looking to see they're looking to see Jesus and other people. They're looking to see Jesus and someone being the mother, looking to see Jesus and someone being a wife and a husband and being in business, and, and you two exemplify that right there. So I definitely want to applaud both of you for that Thank right you. there. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Mm-hmm. That, that, that is so critical because, you know, you know it's like, like you said, a lot of people, a lot of people like to talk, and a lot of people – we look, we are in a society now with the, with the internet age and and the, and the internet marketing where a person can truly people truly get online now and they they let their imagination become who they want to be but they don't deal with who they really are. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. So the person can create a whole different identity online, and they begin mm-hmm. to live in the identity, and they build mm-hmm. their self esteem upon the identity, and then. It, then when they meet these people online, they like, whoa, I thought you was one way. You've been this one way this whole time online, but now I meet you a person. Mm-hmm. And not including the fact that they don't look like what their pictures look like, but that's a whole other <laughs> That's a whole other Photoshop story. That's, right. Yeah, that's, right. that's another story, right? Yeah. <laughs> but they find out this person who's been saying all these sweet things and this person who shared this vision that they shared and wanted to conquer the world and have a family and and be on Oprah mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they find out that person is nothing like that. They self esteem is in the toilet. They lack in spiritual convictions. They find out their house is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and so they they find out and so it's it's a breath of fresh air to talk to a couple. And I'm, I love the points you you made. The first point from the very beginning is that you investigated each other thoroughly as friends and got to know each other as friends first of all. Mm-hmm. And the second part was that you took a good look at the background, each other's background. And the third thing you when you came together, you really looked at each other's strengths and weaknesses, and I love what you do, doing, Pam. What you've done is excellent. You are the resource queen. I mean, it's like you got that magic wand in your hand. Whatever you need, you snap your finger, and it's like there for you, you know, and, and you've done an excellent job of setting yourself up and setting your family up and setting up those who you love in a good place, and that's excellent. And Mark, for you, you have what you said for men, for our listeners, they need to hear this, that when you mentioned the fact that when she jumped out there in the initial mm-hmm. stages of being married and, and seeking the help, looking for that counsel, and, and just being obedient to the spirit and Proverbs are just seeking wise counsel and how yeah. you, you had you had to deal with yourself. Right. That's important for men who listen to hear this, that it, the, be obedient to God and really 
leave that pride at the door. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that you left your pride at the door because if you hadn't left your pride at the door, there's no telling where right. that situation with your marriage would have gone. Thank and you, Michael, for having us. Yes, and that's just one thing that yeah. stops a lot of people from going where they need to go. So real quick, if you if, if I get a quick you know, one minute statement from each of you on what you'd like to share with our listeners, I appreciate it. Well, I think you really capitalized it, uh, wrapped it up for, for me from my perspective, is that, you know, a relationship, uh, particularly a married couple that is going to work together, is one is being able to, the friendship part is, is the the ability to communicate with one another, being able to see things from each other's vantage point, and then to uh, be open for, for assistance, be open for help, and to yeah. uh, seek wise counsel. I mean, that you can either learn from your own mistakes and pay for it that way and make it a long ways, or you can learn from somebody else's mistakes by getting some wisdom from other people that's a lot less painful. Um, and that would be my, my recommendation. Always keep the doors of communication open and, uh, you know, just be ready to, uh, to support one another. You know, the whole thing about marriage, that's what it is. It's about a unity. It's about, you know, a coming together as, as one. And uh, you're, you're, you're a team. So it's, it's not winning for yourself. It's winning for the team. And so that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Thank Pam. you. How about you, Pam? Did we lose Pam? Pam? She must have. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so def- okay. Well, definitely, Mark, man, and Pam, both of you, you have been a great host. We here on Bashani Radio Network, we are pl- plum pleased and pleasure to have you today because on Bashani Radio Network, we're always talking about everything from New York City, and you're on the Mike Camus Show, and we thank you so much, Mark, and we definitely look forward to talking and talking to you again, and appreciate the contribution that you're doing in your city, in your church, and in your community, and even in the business. Marketplace, and we appreciate everything that you and your wife are doing. And to Thanks next for time, us, Mike. yes, absolutely. You have a great day, okay? You too. All right.